Hi everyone and welcome to Art Journaling with Nee. Today we're going to be looking at making free standing art doll muses. So I'm starting off using some collage elements. Now these are printables from Little Raven Ink and I've printed them onto sticker paper but any face, legs and arms combination that you have will work to make these dolls. So what I'm doing is sticking them on to some thick chipboard. Um, this is just black stuff that I had in my stash and I'm using the size of the head to draw a really simple body shape which is that sort of arch shape. And I wanted some arms for the this doll so I'm using a magazine just to get the arms. Now when I put the arms next to the body they looked a little bit large but in the end I, I ended up using them. So again I'm just trimming, trimming them out roughly and sticking them on to my chipboard. I'm just using a strong glue stick but you can use matte medium that would work really well and in the end one of the little arms comes up so I use matte medium to stick it down. Now this is sort of a Halloween-y based news so I knew I wanted to have a witch's hat on my news so I drew an extra one of those and you could do that for anything any props that you had. All I'm doing now is just cutting out around my images just to have them as separate pieces so I can layer them up and see how they all work together. Now I've got two heads there because I really wasn't sure I liked both of them and I wasn't sure which one I wanted to use in the end so I was just hedging my bets and using both of them and if I don't use one I know I can use it in another doll. On my desk as well you can see I've got some chipboard, uh, pre-cut, laser cut chipboard. Some of it is from Kinder Creations so it's from their newest Halloween release. Some are just some random pieces I've had for quite a long time and on the right hand side that black box is actually a Tim Holtz configuration box and that's going to be the base of my Muse doll, so it's going to be what it's going to stick into. I've also got some um, short kebab sticks, so skewers, that I'm going to use as the prop for what I'm going to do. So this is the reason I wanted <coughs> the lady to have arms, or the little witch to have arms, because I wanted her to be able to hold her broomstick. And it's a cute little chipboard from Kinder Creation saying, if the broom fits. This is a full sheet of a pre-printable from Little Raven Ink but again this is something very easily you could do with uh, scrapbook paper you've got or some paper that you've made up yourself. It's handy that it's on sticker paper because you can just stick it down but just using matte medium would do the same job. So all I'm doing is just sticking it down on the box, folding it over to get this sort of random effect. It works really well with mixed collage papers because then it doesn't matter that you've got overlapping pieces that don't match. It's, it's supposed to look like that. Inside that configurations box, that it doesn't actually have a lid on it. So this is a piece of scrapbook paper, or collage paper that I've painted up using uh, watercolor paint and paints and metallics and, and stamping ink and so on. So you could do something similar like that to do the, the base as well. For the base, inside it, it's got some of the of um, florist foam, just to um, make sure when I stick the skewers into it, it's got something um, that will hold the skewers firm, that they won't move around and get loose. So that's, if you see the white stuff underneath, that's what that is. So on my body I've stuck down my paper that I'd coloured and I've put some stencils and now I'm going to put some collage papers over it. Because this is a witchy Halloween-y type go, I thought this, these skeleton um, tissues from Kinder Creations would be a really good mix. So I've got the skeleton of the, the shoulders and of the um, legs as well, sort of coming over the top. Using collage medium and tissue papers, particularly if they're very fine tissue papers, you need to be really delicate with them because they can move and tear, which I don't mind. I like the extra texture that, that gives, but um, if you're really worried about it, just be really gentle with it. And I suggest you add the collage medium with your finger perhaps, so that you're dabbing it on top rather than rubbing it or brushing it with a brush. 
By putting that back on, I'd lost a little bit of the really bright colour in the background. So I've just gone in with my watercolours again to add some of the bright colours over the top that I liked um, in the background, just to brighten it up a little bit. And it will resist in some areas, which is fine. But you can still see the collage coming through. You can see the music in the background, so you don't lose anything. When you look at it um, in real life up close, you can actually see a lot of what's happening in great detail. With the witch's hat I wanted to put some foil on it so what I've done is I've just added some matte medium to the witch's hat and I'm just going to set it aside and let it dry. And with the body I went back in and just put in some metallics. Because the arms looked fairly realistic and I wanted to make them look less realistic I've gone in with a Copic marker or an um, alcohol marker and just drawn some stripes on the arm so it sort of blends in and brings some of that black into the body and also um, echoes what the legs look like. So you can see as I'm going along there's lots of um, additional elements that you sort of prepare and set aside so having a large area to work in really helps. Um, you can see my area getting messier and messier and full confession here <laughs> um, I was in a bit of a creative just keep going and stuff was starting to pile up on either side which is fine but I was starting to lose things and one of the things I lost was one of the, the um, doll's legs I could not find anywhere so at some stage I do actually stop the video tidy up go and reprint the the uh, legs and recut them out the one that I'd missed out on so um, that's why there's only one leg sitting there at the moment I do not know where the other one's gone I still haven't found it to add a little bit more interest into the body I'm just going through and um, sticking down some metallic washi tapes I've got the really wide stripe tape which I didn't want a huge stripe of so I've just trimmed that down now I'm using this red liner double sided tape to stick down this beaded trim. The reason I'm not using normal double sided tape is this red liner tape is just extra extra sticky. It's really great at um, holding more um, 3D objects down onto a piece and it not moving. I just put some matte medium on the ends of the cut um, binding just so it didn't fray and this is a piece of trim that I bought with the buttons on it a long time ago for a Moulin Rouge inspired piece that I did and I really love those tiny little buttons on the black so I'm sticking that down again using the red liner tape to do that you could use wet glue to do it um, especially if it dries clear it's not really going to make much of a difference I just find it easier to have something that sticks it immediately and it's not going to get in the way to use my chipboard what I'm doing is first of all I'm coating it in white the reason for that is if you paint your chipboard white to begin with or ink it white it's going to let any colors you put on top come up their true color so I'm putting this into the gold and you can see it's a really yellow gold so it's going to stand out and it's going to look really metallic I'm just heating it to set it and then putting in some extra detail with my pen you don't need to do the stage of doing the white first it's totally up to you um, but I've I've found in my years using chipboard if you're painting it in a particularly if it's a bright color having that white underneath just makes the colors really pop on top uh, chipboard is slightly porous so any colors that you put in is going to sink in and you are going to get some of that um, brownish tinge coming through with my base of my piece it was looking a little bit too random and too bright for the colors that I had on my body so I've decided to mute it down a little bit by putting some orange over the top also like the body I just added in some extra washi just to add some interest so this is the hat now that I'm going back to I'd left it aside it had some matte medium on and I'm just with some foil pressing over the top and um, putting a really interesting pattern on it it's not covering it fully and I don't want that I want the texture of it so that's why it's bits and piecey but it, I think it really 
adds to the effect of what you're doing and using the foil gives you that beautiful metallic to it. With the chipboard I'm just going back in and adding some black to it just particularly on the bristles of the brush and um, to make it look a little bit more realistic and going back in and putting a little bit more foil. I was debating on putting foil on the bat as well um, but I decided not to in the end. So this is a pumpkin edging piece but I really liked how it looked as a piece of trim on the body of my doll. So I'm going in again with my um, sponge and sponging over some of the orange paint. If I'd wanted it really, really orange, I would have coloured it white to begin with, but it actually came up quite orange just by sponging on, I think because it's such a, a fine piece. What I'm doing now is you're just using some foam tape I'm putting some metallic washi over the top of it so that the pumpkin's face has got a metallic um, eyes and mouth through it. And it also raises that piece off the body just to give it a bit of extra um, depth to the piece. Because I put the washi over the top of the double sided foam, I obviously needed to add some more adhesive to um, over the top of the washi to stick the piece down. So I just used some matte medium. I had the two finials that I'd cut off my uh, chipboard piece there, which I really liked, and I liked how they worked together. So I've got those sitting on my desk waiting for something to do. And now I'm just starting to stick it all together. Um, I would suggest if you are doing this, and I didn't do it at this stage, before you start sticking anything on, with a different piece of paper, cut out um, a replica of the body to stick on the back of it. Um, and this is going to hide the skewers. So you'll see what I'm doing later on, but I'd, I'd suggest you do that before you uh, stick everything on. Otherwise, you're going to have to do the, the quick fix that I did. It did work, but it's probably easier to use the actual chipboard as a bit of a template. So now I'm gluing everything down using double-sided tape, double-sided foam, and for the piece of chipboard across her arms, I'm using some matte medium, and I'm just finding some clips to hold it down in place. Now I'm using up my leftover paint and just putting it into my paint journal and I'll use that in some other way. I was trying to clean up as I, I went along but it was, uh, I was in the, in the moment and it was just getting, you know, I just wanted to get it done. To glue down the skewers I'm using again the red liner tape which is really, really sticky and just trimming down alongside it. So I'm sticking down my legs and I'm going to stick the skewers um, from the legs up through the body uh, so that you've got that support that will go into the foam. And you can see that going down now. I would suggest before you do it, and you'll see me do this in a minute, because you will see some of the stick, um, if you're really fastidious about it, to colour it, uh, paint it, or I just use that uh, licensed to quill pen. It's a, a water soluble permanent pen. You can use a permanent marker to do exactly the same. It's probably a little bit less fiddly than using paint to do the same job. And it dries instantly. So you don't obviously need to do the piece that's going to stick into the base and you don't need to do the bits that are up the top because that's going to be covered by tape. So I'm just sticking them down. And at this stage, I think I realised that I needed to do the base. So I'm actually using the piece that I cut out from my piece of paper. And I'm going back to the sticker paper to um, stick this down. Because I don't need to work, but worry about any other adhesive. I can just use the sticker paper. Um, if you do use other adhesive, I'd suggest probably something like um, double-sided tape or the red liner tape to stick it down. The reason for that is... The wet glue takes a little bit to dry, so it will, um, it may move around, do something that will stick it down almost immediately. So the configuration boxes are the Tim Holtz configuration boxes, and they're very, very tough. So what I did was put my um, doll into the box just to po poke where the holes are going to be, and then I used my scissors to poke a hole in and then just push the skewers into the foam. So you can see it's standing really securely on its own. It's a very funny angle there. Um, 
and now all I'm doing is putting on my final pieces. So I've got my two chipboard finials. I wanted to colour them black so I put them on the top of the ink pad and used my acrylic block to press them down so I didn't get inky fingers because they're so fine. If I'd been pressing them down I would have got covered in ink. And now I'm just using some matte gel medium to glue them onto the hat. When I finished I want to put in a bit of extra bling on it so I've got my self adhesive diamantes which are from Case Crafts and I'm just adding those on for the eyes, for some buttons on her shoes and just for some extra interest on the, the hat as well. So at this stage it was fairly nearly done, I'm just adding on the red liner tape again for her hat. I love this tape because I know it's not going to move anywhere, it's very very secure. When I removed the uh, binding clips from my chipboard, I found it took some of the gold off, which is why I've just added a little bit of extra gold. And my final thing was just to put in a saying. Now this is one of Tim Holt's new releases, and it says, uh, I like you, but if zombies chase us, I'm tri tripping you. So I thought she was a very sassy little doll, um, and that was perfect for her. So this is the final piece. It seems complicated when you're sort of talking it out, but it's a really easy process to do and it was just so fun and it was using up lots of collage stuff that I had on my, my table. Here are two more dolls that I've been doing using the Dina Wakely uh, tissue papers and again the Little Raven Ink um, principles. And these are going to some very special people shortly, so I'm looking forward to them getting these. So these are the my Art Doll Muses. I hope you've enjoyed watching this, and I hope you have a go at making your own. Thank you so much for sticking around, and I'll see you next time. Bye.